And we are back live in Atlanta. Yes, we may get a crowd of over 10,000 tonight. Our producer is Paul Graham, our director Troy Clara, Matt Bloom and Jeff and Johnny Russell, a part of our Raptors television network crew. Normally we come in here, it's the library. About 25 people on hand, but that case no longer here in Hot Atlanta. Let's take a look at our MGD starting lineups. For the Raptors, Parker, Garbajosa, and Bosch, and up front for Atlanta, Josh Smith, Jaja Pachulia, and Sheldon Williams, their first round pick out of Duke. And the backcourt featuring Ford, Jones, Claxton, and Johnson. That's right, Claxton still not 100%, and everybody knows what Joe Johnson has been doing to the NBA. Absolutely lighting it up so far this season. Yeah, Claxton missed the last time these two teams met with a sore knee as the Atlanta Hawks trying to snap a four-game losing streak. They have not won since they beat the Raptors two weeks ago in Toronto by the score of 111 to 102. And they've had some tough losses along the way, Chuck, especially at home. Overtime losses going right down to the wire. That's right. Losses of one, three, five, and five. So again, the Raptors in a situation they have not won on the road in a span of two years, 13 games. The Raptors, after a victory the other night at home against the Cleveland Cavaliers, check it in with a record of 3-8. and eight. And uh, they had a great shoot-around today. They know what's going on, Leo. They know the importance of really a swing game because if they can start building off the Cavaliers and then a Hawks win, they get Indiana at home on Sunday. Well, you could just see the difference in the Raptors just from an emotional standpoint after winning against Cleveland and doing it with the defensive effort where they gave holding the Cavaliers to just 12 points in the fourth quarter and below 40% shooting for the game. The head coach of the Toronto Raptors, Sam Mitchell, played about an hour away from Mercer, where he was an outstanding ball player. Entertained the uh, team last night for a Thanksgiving dinner here in the United States. And uh, Mike Woodson, the head coach of the Atlanta Hawks. And both coaches face a lot of similar problems this season in that they have young teams, they have teams that have been put together, a lot of different faces that they have to find a way to bring them together as quickly as possible for success. That's right, the Hawks, the youngest team of the league, averaging just over 23 years per man. Let's take a look at our IBM winning strategies. Chuck, very important for the Raptors to extend their pick and rolls defensively, really get up there, keep Johnson and Teron Lou wide, both can really work off the screens, attack, and hit the jump shots. Battle of the glass. The last meeting, Atlanta Hawks won the job on the glass, 49-40. Raptors have to get out there. Remember, if you want to run, you got to board, so it's key that the Raptors get on the glass. Finally, win at the line. Against Atlanta last time, they only had 16 free throw attempts. Against the Cleveland Cavaliers the other night, they won and had 34 free throw attempts. Direct correlation there, Chuck. You win at the line. Well, Chris Bosch, he is the face of this team, no doubt about that. And uh, he's playing on that sore right knee. He's got a uh, brace on the right knee. And uh, I talked to him today at the shoot around. He said, Chuck, no problem, just for precautionary measures. And a reporter went up to him and said, have you ever thought about taking a game off? And he said, absolutely not. <laughs> and for good reason. The Raptors are 5-16 and 16 without CB4 on the floor. Yeah, not an option whatsoever. Just wearing that brace for precautionary purposes. Watched him shoot and work out before the game. He was moving fine, just wants to make sure it just keeps the knee tight and loose. Joe Johnson, seventh in the league in scoring at 27 per game. All right, he's a marvelous player, Chuck. Remember, came over as a point guard, and, and people kind of misinterpret that. He wasn't going to be a pure point guard for the Atlanta Hawks, but he's a guy that can handle the ball like a point guard, and as we show it off the top, he's got size to score inside, outside, any way you want to do it. This guy can score, and he's a very unselfish player as well. If his teammate has a shot, he'll give it up. No Mo Pete again with that elbow injury, and for the Atlanta Hawks, no Josh Childress, and he lit up the reps for 16 in Toronto. He remains out with a sore foot. Yeah, even the Atlanta Hawks are surprised what an impact not having Childress has had on this club. He can really do a lot of different things when you talk versatility. Very much so. Childress told me today he's going to be sidelined for at least another week. And Marvin Williams told me he's not expected back for two more weeks with that busted hand. And we are underway. Williams who had a double-double against the Pistons, the rookie out of Duke, to Petrulia. And Joe Johnson on a pump from 18 feet. Bucket. You really want to try to stay in your feet with Joe Johnson. He's very good with the head and shoulder fakes, ball fakes. He'll try to get you to leave your feet. He's very patient on his shot. 
Parker comes off the screen, and his 19-footer hit back rim. Smith had four triples against the Raps in Toronto. It just shows you the development of his game, Chuck. He gets better all the time. And a deflected pass and a steal. Here come the Raptors with T.J. Ford, who had a double-double against Atlanta. Bosch, the step back from 17. Our first quarter right here on TSN, brought to you by the fine folks from Ford. Friday Night Hoops, Zaza Pachulia. The send-out goes to Smith on a two-man game. Pachulia bobbled the ball and put up an ugly-looking shot, but it's good. A lot of time to make that move in the paint. The Raptors have to get down there a little quicker. Chuck, against the Cavaliers Wednesday night, Toronto got to the glass, got to the basket early in the game. So far, it's been two jump shots. Fred Jones for three, and you can rig it up from downtown. Goggle dude, Somalia, and that goes out to Dave. Mikulowski, and he gets the tapes from uh, friends and family in the greater Toronto area, and he watches Raptors ball in Somalia. Now that's a fan right there. Mm -hmm. Josh Smith in traffic, finds wins with an easy dunk. Now you really got to be careful on a closeout with Smith. Even though he's made some threes, Chuck, he's still a guy you'd rather have shoot threes and penetrate. That time, because of a poor closeout, able to find his teammate under the bucket. Bosch, all the way to the cup. Partially blocked. It's T.J. Ford picks up the loose ball. Here's Garbajosa. Yes. I like that move by Bosch, Chuck. He went up there. He got, looked like he may have been fouled on that play, but good, strong effort. And Joe Johnson on a stroll to the rim and a foul. So Peterson, Justin Civis tonight, had that Ironman streak. And the other night against Cleveland and uh, another key player, Josh Childress. I keep telling him every time I run into him that one day in my next life I want his hair. Okay? <laughs> Chuck, I, I hear that about anybody that's got hair when you're around <laughs> him. So, Childress, don't feel special. Chuck's going after any bit of hair he can get his hands on. I mean, he looks like you know, the Jackson 5. Well, who was uh, Michael Jackson, one of his brothers? Was it Tito? I, I think he's got the Tito hair. Oh, you're going way back here. Yes. I think you better stop. You're <laughs> aging yourself. I love it. Well, it's funny how, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side. Hearing Childress a little earlier, he thought he was going to go with your look. He said, <laughs> you know, I think I've had enough. I want the source look. Yeah. Well, Claxton in the first year of a four-year, $24 million deal, oh. giving it up to Pachulia, who missed the layup, went off his hands, picked up by Fred Jones. With a 6-5 Hawks lead, early first quarter on TSN. T.J. Ford, line to the lane, sets up Garbo Hosa beautifully, and he knocks it down. Garbo has that jump shot going early, Chuck. When he gets his feet set, he can make that shot, and I love his range. How about T.J. Ford already with three assists in the ball game? He's getting more and more comfortable with his teammates. Joe Johnson giving it up to Petrulia. We'll see what the Hawks run here. Johnson left pocket wide open a three ball weak side rebound Garbajosa tried to keep it in play and we're gonna have a loose ball foul on the Atlanta Hawks Josh Smith Garbajosa is averaging eight rebounds over the past four games oh, he goes after it he, he's a warrior around the glass whether it's an offensive rebound or a defensive rebound he gets in there very active here just tapping the ball to himself keeping it alive and notice that save Chuck so many times you see a player with throw it under his own basket giving the opposing team an opportunity Garbajosa threw it way out there and knocks down another jump shot three of three from the field the Raptors have a 9-2 run here in the first quarter and they lead Atlanta by three Garbajosa filling up the stat sheet with six Ford has four assists Pachulia with an up and under blocked away loose on the deck it's Williams on a power move got tied up and that's going to be a charge on the rook and that's once again an example of what Garbajosa does we see him on the glass here taking a charge he does a lot of the little things that sometimes you can't get players to do but here he is helping out Bosch and then when that loose ball gets to Williams he's right there to take the charge Chris with block number 11 on the season. T.J. Ford with a stop and go to the glass. <laughs> so quick off the dribble. And the Raptors by five, and Mike Woodson has pulled out a play to Speedy Claxton. You can count it in the foul. Well, we talk about T.J. Ford's quickness. Mike Woodson knows Speedy Claxton's got that great first step as well. Very crafty off the dribble, and he's able to get into the paint to score. 
Check out this explosive move. A little late there with the help from Jones. Uh, Speedy Claxton, one of the risks you have with him. Remember we saw him last year at Oklahoma playing alongside Chris Paul off the bench, playing with him. I thought a good situation for a guy that has a history of injuries, Chuck. Mm -hmm, yes. Where now he's going to be counted on to do more at that point guard position that he could become a little bit too stressful and could be hurtful for the Atlanta Hawks. Fred Jones on a switch. Garbajosa, nice cut off the ball to Ford. Here is Anthony Parker from downtown for three, and the Raptors are on fire. They're six of nine. But how does that start? The guy who's three for three gives up a shot to get his teammate a look. That's what gets that movement and ends up with an even a better wide open look. And they're going to give Claxton that shot all night long. And Josh Smith going to the floor, trying to keep it in play, and also Parker diving to the court. Chuck, right now, Raptors have five, six made field goals on five assists. So doing an outstanding job of sharing the ball. And look at the work at the defensive end, going after it. Anthony Parker, another guy that does the dirty work. The head first slide. Wonder if he would have to pay for those tickets. Those are pretty expensive. <laughs> 13 on the clock. Claxton, the fade, the fire, and the rainbow. He has a nice rhythm to his game. I like the way he sets himself up for his shots. I'm not sure he's a starting point guard, though, Leo. Well, from a durability standpoint, I'm convinced he's not. He was second in the league in uh, sixth man voting this season ago, and as you mentioned, that was really his comfort zone. And I like the way he can come into the game and change the rhythm of it. Oh, wow. Garbo on fire. He's four for four. And people shouldn't be surprised. You know, kind of a slow start to the season, but a guy that had a, had a long summer playing for Spain, and he can do this on a regular basis, what we're seeing now. And look at that. Look at that job on the glass. Just pushing Pachulia out of the way. And again, T.J. Ford with the push. Nice scoop pass to Parker, and he traveled. Pass was just a little bit hard for a guy on the move in traffic to catch it. It was a little tough. Sam Mitchell. Has to be happy with the start his players have had. And you know what I've been impressed with, Chuck? You know, Sam Mitchell's team coming back from the Western swing, you, you think fatigue would be an issue. They battled against Cleveland. They're coming out here with energy and Garbajosa. One of the reasons why the veteran bringing his A game. Smith. Claxton. Three ball. He can knock it down. And that's, that's where you look at that range here has in his jump shot. He's very good at scoring off the dribble where he backs you up, but he can also knock down that long range shot. Raptors shooting 70%. TJ Ford off the bounce. They seal him off. And Fred Jones slashing to the cup. Short. And with 17 on the clock, Atlanta retains possession. We have a timeout with 5.38 to go right here on TSM with the Raptors in front. 16-13 by Jorge Garbajosa. Four for four. He's got eight points, a couple of boards for the Raps. Welcome back on TSN in Atlanta, our Ford Fusion creator reaction. And you've got Ford, Bosch, and Jones. Going into each game, it's hard to predict who's going to win. The league is so well balanced, and it's equal. No team is as dominant as the next. Try to figure out who said that. But right now, you know who's saying it by his game. Who's stepping out there? Jorge Garbajosa. Loves that shot, Chuck. Get him at the top of the key. Nails a shot here in the corner. But always on balance. You notice he rarely takes a shot where he doesn't go straight up, straight down, always in rhythm. Well, in rhythm, and that is Joe Johnson. What a story. Here's the guy picked by Boston. Celtics gave up on him. Brian Colangelo, the architect of the Raps, engineered a fabulous trade. Rodney Rogers, Tony Delk, headed to Boston for Joe Johnson, and then Joe Johnson gets a max deal. Front loaded, and he picks up Boris Diaz. What's amazing to me is how many guys go to Phoenix and have their careers either resurrected or launched playing in that system alongside Steve Nash. And even though Joe Johnson comes to Atlanta, and you know what, it's turned out to be a good situation for him in terms of an individual standpoint. Team's still learning and growing, but how do you leave a situation like Phoenix? I think if you're a player, that, that's a great situation to be in. 
after Fred Jones misfired. Here, this is Josh Smith. Smith weaving inside. Let's see what the Atlanta Hawks run here in a half court set. Ron Lou now in the ball game. He's had success over the last few years in an Atlanta uniform against the Raps. And a crossover, giving it up wide open. Smith from the left quarter, three ball misfired. Down the court, TJ Ford. This is Bosch. Anthony Parker around the iron, and now there's T.J. going strong to the floor, and Smith comes up with the ball. What does Atlanta try to do when they when they can't run, Leo? Well, obviously, when Teron Lou, you want to try to get something going. He's very good at driving, kicking, and playing with Boxton as you see knocks down their jump shot. You have two very quick point guards that can not only create their own shot but give their teammates some easy looks. So the Hawks have reclaimed the lead, 17-16. Bosch had the ball knocked out of his hands. Petulia playing very physical against Bosch. He's going to do that, but he definitely is in a disadvantage from a quickness standpoint. But that time being quick enough to get over and cut the baseline off to draw the charge. Joey Graham checking in for the Raptors. He played 28 minutes the other night with 16 points, eight rebounds, went to the line nine times. Yeah, he came in the last game against Cleveland, aggressive right off the top. Shot his jump shot, took the ball to the bucket. Here are his numbers in 28 minutes. Solid and the free throw attempts, the nine free throw attempts that would impress me because he went to the bucket when the opportunity was there. Again, Jim Johnson hiding behind that screen, and he's wide open, Leo. Yeah, and, Joe, and, and Joey Graham, he's going to be guarding Joe Johnson. He can't get caught up in those screens. He's really got to fight over that and get some help from his teammates. Hawks playing with a lot of energy after that timeout. They're on a 12-5 run. Joe Johnson stepped back, the 21-footer, and Joe Johnson now with nine first-quarter points. Well, he's one of those guys that you take your chances with him giving up the ball to somebody else. You know he can beat you. It's very important for Toronto to get up on him, regardless of who's covering him. Make it a little bit more difficult than that. Fred Jones takes his draw on the baseline. Count it and a foul. Well, how many times have we talked about who is the real Fred Jones? The guy that settles for the threes? or the guy that mixes it up, puts the ball on the floor, gets to the basket, as well as having a three-point shot as part of, the, part of his arsenal. And I like it when Fred Jones is aggressive. When he's getting to the free throw line, you know positive things will happen for Toronto. And on the other end, Joe Johnson has been just on fire. Now see what happens right here. You can't go under a screen like that when you're guarding Joe Johnson. You have to be on his tail. If you go underneath, you can take that shot. Some players you gamble, with Joe Johnson you don't. On the season for the Raptors, now Fred Jones from the line is 30 of uh, 32. Fourth best in the NBA. Another reason to get out there. Wide open again, Joe Johnson. You have to be kidding me. Yeah, it just, it, it's inexcusable. And Sam Mitchell wants to get a timeout. He's going to rip into his team. Once the guy is on a roll like that, how do you give him another open look? Well, Joe Johnson with 12, and a frustrated Sam Mitchell's going to talk it over. We'll be right back on TSN. And welcome back, TSN, with Atlanta and the Raptors, Joe Johnson. No average show, and you know what? That, that well, you know what? It all. Being an average show and you're averaging 27 a game isn't bad, but he's got 12 already on 5 of 6 on the field. But watch the defensive mistakes right here. Joey Graham guarding Joe Johnson. He gets stuck behind the screen. Now, if that happens, Bosch has to get Johnson. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. But Joey can't allow himself to get screened that easily, Chuck. Otherwise, this guy is going to light you up. Well, let me ask you about that. You talked about Graham and Bosch. So Bosch should stay on Johnson. Once you see a guy that's knocked down three straight shots, has an open look, you have to get him. You don't, you don't have a choice in the matter. But if you're Joey Graham, you have to get up and not allow that to happen. Is that a lack of communication? Or? And that's all it comes down to, Chuck. It's communication and intensity of the defensive end. You've got to be aggressive. Andrea Bargnani is on the floor now, and we're going to have a foul against the Raptors. Andrea Bargnani, who has played extremely well. In fact, the last two games, shooting 46% from the floor. He's played 52 minutes. He's just got to get comfortable, Chuck. Being the first pick in the draft, there's a lot of pressure, but to live up to that pressure, he has to have minutes and an opportunity to prove himself and get comfortable. And that's what Sam Mitchell is now giving him. Pachulia weaving inside, going right to left in the paint. 
And Bargnani has to do a better job, Chuck. That was just too easy. He's a much quicker player. Or put it this way, he's got enough quickness to take that away from Pachulia. TJ Ford toying with Speedy Claxton in. The bounce pass goes right between the wickets of Joey Graham. Out of bounds, a turnover for the Raptors. And we have Jose Calderon coming in for TJ Ford. Ford leaves with six assists here in the period. The yeah, Raptors, uh, unfortunately, getting away from some of the things they were doing earlier defensively, and now a couple of turnovers on offense as well. The Hawks shooting a blistering 68%. Claxton, nope. Rebound, Garbajosa. You've got uh, Calderon, Bargnani, Jones, Garbo, and Graham. Joey Graham got it. Good looking shot. Good looking pass from Jose Calderon as well. Pachulia working against the Rook. The double comes over on a two-man game. Zaza splits, and he walked. Yep, good call by official Sean White. Andrea Bargnani. And this is where he has to trust his quick. In certain matchups, Bargnani's going to have opportunities to be quicker than other players. And he almost makes a mistake the way he allows Pachulia to get into the middle. But again, able to recover. Pachulia, not the best of ball handlers. And for the Hawks, Smith returns. Claxton leaves. You know, Smith hit four threes against the Raptors a couple of weeks ago. Since then, he's four for 21. Well, that's what I was going to say, Chuck. He's shooting 28% on the season, so he's not a guy that you want to allow to penetrate and get into the paint. He's somebody you want to encourage to take threes. You still contest them, but you encourage him. Carvajosa. Bargnani from 15. He has got a beautiful stroke. Well, you talk about distributing the basketball, Chuck. Garbajosa's got three assists in the game as well. So not only has he had the hot hand, but he's been looking for his teammates as well. Teron Lou from downtown. He's played very well of late. 18 points, six assists the past four games. He's just a solid, good basketball player. He is. And he's a guy that he doesn't care whether he starts. As a no. matter of fact, he says he doesn't like starting a game, but... Whether you start him, play him off the bench, more minutes, less minutes, he's a contributor. He's a guy that gets it done. Blue again off a of right. screen. Chuck, Raptors, Raptors are going under screens on shooters. That's a dangerous game to play. Even when they miss, you don't want to play the odds on those shots. Joey Graham. Weak side rebound kept alive by Pargnani. The cold run. And with 17 seconds remaining in the quarter, the Raps go for the last shot, trailing by seven on the road. Here's Calderon. And he's fouled out in front with 7.3 seconds remaining. And they had a foul to give. Let's see what the Raptors are able to do with whether it's Garbajosa or Bargnani on the floor. Chuck, they can set a high screen with either one of those guys, and they can both step back and take that long-range jump shot Opposing bigs don't like to get out there and guard. And that pass is stolen. And the lead down the floor. Smith with a dunk. Oh, my goodness. Fred Jones. Yeah. And at the end of the first quarter, Atlanta by nine. Well, Joe Johnson got it going, Chuck. The Raptors seem to be cruising along until Joe Johnson got the hot hand, and he's got 12 here in the first quarter. 24-7 speed stick, first quarter stats. Well, Raptors shooting the ball exceptionally well, 55%, but they're allowing Atlanta to shoot 63%, and both teams are shooting well from three, even on the glass, points of the paint, advantage Hawks, but... Toronto has to tighten up their defense, Chuck. They're just allowing way too many easy looks. And how about this dunk by Josh Smith off the turnover? Teron Lou throws it up, and this guy can fly, folks. Wow, he gets up quick. Now, Leo, the Raptors had problems with screens, Atlanta screens, in the first quarter. Is that something that can be corrected, or is that indecision, confusion? What, what's well, going it on? It appears to be indecision, Chuck, and absolutely you can correct it. You want to make sure that you decide who you have, how you're going to play them, and usually that's decided before the game starts. I'm sure Sam Mitchell has told us, guys, when you're dealing with Joe Johnson, you do not go under screens. You have to make sure you're aggressive, and if he does get open, somebody's got to step up and not allow him to get that open shot. 
Lou flat on the jumper. We're going to have a loose ball foul against the Raptors. That will go against Joey Graham. Well, the Raptors playing with fire. We've had some unattended shots taken by Atlanta in the perimeter. And, and that's the concern. You know, if players make contested shots, so be it. But when they're making open looks, that, that'll get any coach going. On a post-up, Smith against Joey Graham. Caldron comes over to Shade and help on the double. 15 on the clock. Now in a switch, Graham has picked up Thron Lou. Lou on a crossover and a spin. Matt Freegee. Three on the clock, Teron Liu out in front. And it's Chris Bosch back on the floor for the Raptors. A difference there, Anthony Parker doing a good job getting his hand up, contesting that shot by Liu. And Bargnani, a little off balance on that shot. And it's Teron Liu, and that's going to be a charge as he ran into Joey Graham. Again, something that's frustrating for Mike Woodson, Sam Mitchell, with any coach when you're dealing with your point guards, you have to stay in control. To lose control in transition is just a wasted opportunity. Check out Joey Graham. Solid defense on Teron Lou forcing that kick out. And when that extra pass is made, Anthony Parker also came up. And Graham played LeBron very tight in the fourth quarter the other night at the ACC. Here is Parker. Comes up shooting. Buries the J. Anthony Parker. Good quick passes. Good use of the dribble. He's so unassuming. And, and he really is has no ego. He's a low-maintenance player that you got to have. No question. He does the dirty work at the defensive end of the floor and will give up any shot to get a better one for his team. A hand check, Calderon on Lou. Jose Calderon and the Raptors trailing 32-25. Raps shooting 52%. Atlanta, 58%. Both teams came in at 44%. Well, these are tough guards for the Raptors to match up with, whether it's Teron Liu as Joe Johnson comes back into the game or Speedy Claxton. They're very difficult guards. Joe Johnson is about as hard as anybody in this league to cover. You know, Leo, I said at the outset that this kind of a swing game for both teams. Raptors trying to build off their victory against the Cavaliers and gain some momentum as they take on the Pacers at home on Sunday. Atlanta's dropped four in a row. They've got a back-to-back -back here in Orlando tomorrow night. So both teams really need a drop. Nice dribble drive to the cup for well, Calderon. Yeah, he loves that move going down right or left. He'll get in there and do a nice job of getting that ball up high in the glass. But you're right, Chuck. This, this is a, a big game for both of these teams. Joe Johnson switching and going to the left. And that's what makes him so dangerous because not only will he take the shot as we saw in the first quarter, but he'll turn the corner, and that's why every it's a team effort. No one guy is going to stop Joe Johnson. Well, Joe Johnson, you know, I, I'd love to have been on the phone in the Phoenix office when Brian Colangelo engineered that deal with Boston. I think Chris Wallace, I, I don't think Danny Ainge was running the show in Boston. I think it was Chris Wallace, and if I'm mistaken, I apologize, but... I have no idea why Boston gave up on him so quickly. Well, it was also a different system and not quite a system that was going to be good for his game. Oh. It was Paul Pierce's team, Bargnani, knocking down that jump shot. Yep, a three ball for Andrea Bargnani. But one, you know, once Joe Johnson got to Phoenix, Chuck, he, his entire game was exposed. He could show people what he could do in many different aspects. Now you've got Parker on... Uh, Joe Johnson, Lou from the elbow, that's too strong, another board for Bosch. Who's another example of a situation like that? How about Boris Diaw coming from this Atlanta Hawks team where nobody really knew what he could do to go into Phoenix and becoming a star? Well, the Raptors on fire after trailing by nine. This is a 9-2 Raptor run, it's 34-32, and Mike Woodson wants to talk it over. So Sam Mitchell, he's excited, he's back home at Atlanta and his team. Back in the ball game, early second quarter on TSN. All right, uh, we're back on TSN. There you go, Leo. Oh, Thanksgiving uh, dance pack. A Thanksgiving dance well, they're pack. Dancing That's a little the best slow. They're dancing offer. a little slow, Chuck. They had a lot of turkey yesterday. They're not quite on their game right now. It's going to take them a quarter or two to get loose. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Our uh, Gatorade Game X Factor tonight. Uh, I selected Teron Liu of Atlanta. No, you... uh, it's a good choice. He's played well against the Raptors historically, and uh, he's off to a pretty good start in this game. And I took Anthony Parker. I figured he's due for a 
for a real good ball game at both ends of the floor and thought this might be the night. Parker uh, off to a decent start here so far. He's two of four, he's got five points and you know defensively he's always a guy that's asked to get on the opposing team's best perimeter player and right now he's guarding Johnson. Teron Lou catching a little bit of a breather with Speedy Claxton on the floor. Meantime, uh, Bargnani has picked up his second personal foul. He's on the court along with Bosch, Graham, Parker, and Calderon. Joe Johnson. And there's some good help by Bargnani to slow down Johnson, allow Parker to stay in front of him. That means it's very deep at the clock. Sheldon Williams from 17, in and out, stays out. Again, Chuck, you noticed Chris Bosch that time came over to help on the other side of the floor, giving up a jump shot to a big better than Joe Johnson shooting the ball. Now you've got uh, the rookie Williams on Bosch. So let's see what the Raptors run here in half court. Parker for three, and the Raps get it done, and they have reclaimed the lead, 35-34, erasing that nine-point deficit. Oh, that looked like an X-factor to me. And Bargnani with the steal. And here's Calderon, his pass intended for Bargnani, knocked away out of bounds. Now we're going to show you a play that the Raptors did defensively. Watch the help you get on Joe Johnson. Here, Parker goes, and there's Bargnani, slows him down, allows Parker to get in front of him, and as he comes to the other side of the floor, here's Chris Bosch, and that throws the ball, that forces Park, uh, Joe Johnson to throw the ball to the perimeter again, and a big guy takes a shot. You don't mind giving up those shots to the bigs. You just don't want Joe Johnson getting one good look after the other. And as I said, you need to have help guarding him, and the Raptors are getting it now. Pachulia back on the floor. Bosch is double teamed on the baseline. Then on the shot clock, Calderon, pressured by Claxton. Ah! Jose Calderon just took a couple of hawks to score. <laughs> well, what makes it special, he can finish with either hand, and surprisingly many players can't, but Calderon can finish left on the left side, right on the right side, and that makes a huge difference. Joe Johnson. And the Hawks, ice cold here in the second quarter. Well, a little difference when you can test shots. Oh! On the reverse, a late whistle and a foul. Josh Smith. Oh, Raptors are out and running, but it's all starting at the defensive end. They're not giving up those open looks anymore. That was a tough catch by Chris Bosh. That ball was thrown behind his head, above his shoulder, able to catch it on the run. Not many big guys will do that. Don't forget, coming up on Sunday, Right here on TSN, the Pacers are first look at the Indiana Ball Club with Tremaine O'Neal and company. Join us one o'clock from the ACC on TSN. TSN HD as Bosch going to the line. Again, wearing that uh, brace. He said, remember, Chuck, I wore that my uh, rookie year. As Slam Stoudemire coming in for Smith. Bosch wore that uh, brace for four games with a tender right knee his rookie season. Tell you what, his knee, the knee doesn't seem to be bothering him too much right now. He did a great job running the floor, covering a lot of territory. Thirty-nine, thirty-four wraps. Claxton, Williams, and a spin. He's tied up, and he goes underneath the Petulia. Nope, second attempt, good. Jaja Pachulia, he's really done a good job with his body, Chuck. He was kind of a heavy load early on in his career. He's leaned down and it's helped him become quicker, a little bit more better defensively in his lateral movement. Stoudemire did not play against the Raptors in Toronto. Second year player from the University of Arizona. <laughs> Somebody's not shy. When he comes in the oh, game, no. he's ready to fire. You got that right. Oh. Petrulia driving on Bosch, and the ball knocked away out of bounds. Garbajosa returns for the Raps. Atlanta will put the ball in play. Jorge Garbajosa started. Played the first period. Eight points, four boards. Bargnani leaves. Good job for Andrea. He checks out with five points, a couple of rebounds, and a steal. And see, I like what Sam Mitchell's doing now. TJ Ford coming back in the game as well for Calderon. Sam Mitchell's playing a lot of bodies. He's getting production from guys. Guys know they're coming into the game. That's going to allow them to be fresh. That's the way the Raptors played in the preseason, Chuck, when they went 7-1. Joe Johnson with a floater hit back rim. Oh, nice rebound by Parker. Something we talk about a great deal where everybody has to be a rebounder. Your perimeter players as well. Parker did a great job of getting in there. 
snagging that ball. He's got a very quiet eight points, very efficient. Now they play Bosch, double on the ball. Parker from the elbow. Long board, Chris Bosch, so he should have taken that shot. The time's too unselfish. T.J. Ford to the rack, and he makes it look easy. And that's an example. You say too unselfish, but patience. Chris Bosch being patient, kicking that ball out. T.J. Ford and ending up with a layup. Raps are 7 of 11 here in the second quarter. Remember, they were down by 9 going into the break. Speedy Claxton. And there's Joey Graham elevating. An 18-4 Raptor run. T.J. Ford with a charge. And we're going to have a timeout. 41-36 wraps. Bob's 21 to go in the first half. Bosch having a solid game both ends of the floor. And welcome back to Atlanta, the home of Leo Rollins for all the four games, folks. <laughs> As a member of the Atlanta Hawks in the 84-85 uh, season. It was a riveting four games. Yeah. <laughs> well, that guy has played a lot more than four games. LeBron is the 24-7 speed stick player of the week he, he had 30 against the raps but it was a very quiet 30. Well, very quiet at the end of the game i thought the raptors did a great job defensively against LeBron. Leo, tell me about your experience here in atlanta i'm talking about basketball experience <laughs> <laughs> you had a cup of coffee is that it is that what you're telling me no no i had, I had time for coffee pancakes uh actually a couple days here and there a couple days like four games a total of 12 minutes no, I was here longer than that. You played in the Omni and you said had such an effect, they, they trashed the building, they blew it up. Well, well Chuck, it came down to, you know, Dominique Wilkins and myself, and I kept Dominique Wilkins, and, you know, they had a bad year. What can I tell you? <laughs> Joe Johnson, good pressure by Parker, and then Johnson threw it away. He's got the lead pass, Garbajosa on the runway with the layup. Did you check out that dribble? A little he gave it a high, high bounce, the last dribble above Speedy Claxton's head, knowing that the little quick guy was going to try to snag the ball down low. A nice job by Garbajosa. Garbo with 10. Boy, Raptors have really turned it around defensively. Chuck, all those open looks they were giving up have now been taken away from Atlanta. Here's Claxton over Bosch, swatted away from behind by Bosch. His second rejection of the ball game, going up there. Oh my goodness, that was sick, wicked, and nasty. Joey Graham eating some iron here in Atlanta. It starts with the D, and they are off to the races. And that play doesn't happen if Parker doesn't run as well on in transition. Outstanding. Raptors have outscored the Hawks 22 to six here in the second period. Claxton though kept alive, and the ball knocked away by the Raps. How about Joey Graham elevating a beautiful lob, and he threw it down. Well, if you have T.J. Ford on the floor, you want to run with him. Raptors do the job defensively. you got Parker on the left, Graham on the right. That forces the defender to make a decision, and T.J. Ford just tossing it up over to Graham. Joey Graham smiling with that one. How about a 35-40-foot pass by Garbajosa? You're, you're talking about a guy that does this. It's routine for him. That's a charge. Now see, again, the ball was in Joe Johnson's hands. The Raptors play him. They make him get rid of the ball. Let somebody else win. The Raptors, they know Joe Johnson can beat them. But let somebody else get shots. Let somebody else make plays. And the Raptors are forcing turnovers because of that. And in their losing streak of four games, too, they've been involved in a lot of close wins. They just can't seal the deal. This is T.J. Ford. Bosch. He wants it against Pachulia. He's got to take it. Pachulia is too aggressive. And that's exactly why he needs to take it. Pachulia is botting up Bosch. He's reaching with his hands. And any time a player does that, turn, face the basket, put the ball on the floor, it's a guaranteed trip to the line. Raptors with their biggest lead of the ball game, 45-38. And what do we have? We got a tech? Here's it, Sam Mitchell. Got a technical that time, and... I think Sam Mitchell, from what I can gather, Chuck, was saying, hey, he's all over him every play, same way, make the call a little sooner. Well, Sam better be careful. He's going to get tossed. You know, it's a quick whistle this year as far as officials. Although you notice, compared to the first week of the season, not yes. quite as quick.
So he's talking. I think that little hand gesture probably was well, the icing that, on the cake. And that's one of the things the NBA said. They don't want the gestures. They don't want anything that's embarrassing to the officials or the league. You'd be in trouble. <laughs> you get tossed out as an analyst. Those hand gestures you give me. Well, Chuck, if you just back off a little bit, I wouldn't have to. They're going to wave off the bucket by Bosch. A uh, defensive three-second violation on Salim Stadabai. Oh, that, that's a tough call right there when you take away a bucket. The whistle blows just as Chris Bosch is taking the shot. This officiating crew of Tim Donaghy, Sean Corbett, and Sean Wright. And this puts uh, Fred Jones at the free throw line. A kind roll of the rim for Freddie. The disappointed today is Oregon Ducks lost to Oregon State. They call it the Civil War in football. <laughs> He was watching it with a great deal of interest in the locker room. Much more than uh, than we were. Here's T.J. Ford. Ford in the paint. Whips it out. Here's Freddie Jones. Oh, what a what rebound, rebound by, by Bosch in short. Chuck, did that interest Garner, that game garner as much interest as the Buckeyes-Michigan game? <laughs> Probably not. But this will generate some interest. You got Ford running the floor, going upstairs, and a soft putback by Joey Graham after a miss by Freddie. But see, you get the rebound because everybody's running right now. The Raptors are energized. They got a nice bounce to their step. Boy, they have dominated second quarter play here. The Raptors have. And look at that. Every shot is contested. There's no second and third shot opportunities. The Raptors are getting the ball and running down the floor. The Hawks shooting 19% here in the second quarter. Joey Graham, catch and shoot. Nope, long rebound, and it's Teron Lou, Joe Johnson on the runway with the lift. So Johnson leaking out. He's got 16. And that's about it for Atlanta, folks. And Bosch, he turned it over. That's the Raptors' ninth turnover, leading to 14 Atlanta points. A nice pass. A couple of quick buckets by the Hawks. Yeah, and this is where you have to be careful. I mean, Atlanta's not going to lay down and die here. You can't relax defensively. You have to maintain that focus. And good time out here by Sam Mitchell. With a buck 46 to go in the half, the Raptors on the road, leading Atlanta on TSN against the Mavs. Now check out this play by Garbajosa. Talked about it earlier. Watch this last bounce. He bounces it extra <laughs> high and keeps it there knowing that the little guy, Claxton, is going to try to steal. Look at this. Let's the ball bounce up high and waits for Claxton to try to get it and just snags it out of the air and finishes it off. That's a heads up play. And that's, you know, that's not something you see every day. That's a savvy player that's been around the block a few times and just knows how to play the game. Love that move. Jorge Garbajosa at the age of 28, the oldest rookie this year in the NBA. He's not a rookie. He's not a rookie. NBA standards, though, he is. He's just played way too much ball at a high level to call him a rookie. I don't care how long he's been in the NBA. Garbajosa, stutter step, dribble drive. Tough pass for Parker to handle. Yeah, we've seen Parker get a few of those in this game already. Just a little bit too hard to catch in traffic. Joe Johnson, nope, and there's Garbo again. I see Chuck, as good a player as Joe Johnson is, mm -hmm. there's such a difference for any player when the shots are contested versus open. Since he's been challenged, since he's had people up on him, he's slowed down dramatically. Other than that big layup he had in the transition, he hasn't made a shot, and that's just good defense. Only four points for Joe Johnson in the second quarter. Raptors lead by five. T.J. Ford. Garbajosa, three ball. <laughs> even even Garbajosa <laughs> looked at that and said, whoa, where'd that come from? <laughs> if you're going to miss, <laughs> missing good. Wow. You got to check the backboard on that one. Here's oh. Julia swatted away by Bosch's third. He got a piece of that one as well. well and, and see, when Bosch helps out like that, he makes a great effort to come over and help out. Everybody else is going to drop in there, so that ball doesn't come to Sheldon Williams for an easy bucket. And it's a three-point wrap lead. 13 on the shot clock. DJ Ford. And Tim Donaghy is pulled, what, three second? On whom? They're going to call this on Bosch. Okay. Chris Bosch, his stat line, 20 minutes, 0 for 4 from the floor, 2 of 2 from the line. Couple of points, five boards, two assists, three blocks.
That's not bad. No, hey, listen, you're right. Your team's in front. That's the bottom line. Oh, he's doing some good things defensively, getting up to testing. The Raptor turnovers, however, Leo, have kept yeah. the Hawks in this ballgame. Yeah, that's 16 points. They've given up off 11 turnovers. That's a tough pass for Petrulia to handle. After Joe Johnson penetrated in the lane, we have a Raptor foul. This will go against Bosch. But one of the positives here that they've allowed the Raptors to come back in this game and take lead the bench. 17 to 6. 17 to 8 over the Atlanta Hawks right now. Halftime, Rod Black, Brian Hee at the TSN Studios. Cedric Bozeman, an undrafted rookie at a UCLA, one of three Bruins selected. Slim Studemeyer will take a seat. Again, the Hawks playing without Childress and Marvin Williams. The Raps without Chris Humphreys and uh, Mo Peterson. Talked to Chris today about that ankle. He says, Chuck, I'm just not 100%, not ready to go. Well, fortunately, the Raptors have the, the depth to absorb the absence from absence of Mo Peterson and Chris Humphreys. And TJ Flo uh, Floor was slammed to the floor from behind. And here's Bosch helping him up. After Sam Mitchell called the timeout with TJ, and he's getting a little gimpy there. He's all right. Watch this. A little reach, little trip. One would good. One good way to slow him down. I don't know if I was playing against him, that's what I'd do. That'd <laughs> <laughs> be my only chance. Really? Just grab, hold, kick. Whatever it takes. Don't forget NFL Sunday right here on TSN. You've got Peyton Manning and the Colts. Take it on Jeff Garcia, a little CFL in there, replacing the injured Donovan McNabb. We have it for you on TSN well, at 7 o'clock. What a tough break for Donovan McNabb. You're talking about a guy that... Where much... did he go to school, Leo? I think it's Syracuse, if I'm not mistaken. How much but you get paid? You're talking about a just much, like you. a much maligned guy. Even Philadelphia just can't do anything right now. Blows out the ACL. Yeah. I can't believe any Michigan guy would talk about people getting paid. Yeah, especially after a horrible loss to the Buckeyes. Well, well, you, you're trying to say I'm in the Chris Weber, Robert Trailer, Maurice Taylor, Lewis Bullock. Whoa, you, you know, you're talking about a serious bankroll right there. Uh, Garbajosa traveled on the sideline in front of us. Not often you take a pay cut when you come to the NBA, Chuck. <laughs> so Garbo's saying, wait a minute, what did I do here? And uh, Tim Donaghy is explaining that Garbajosa shuffled his feet. And on the sideline, we've got... So Garbajosa and Varnani, part of the Euro connection. Well, you can see what they've done last couple of games. I think Garbajosa being a starter has really been a, a tremendous difference for him. He's had been energized by that move. Varnani getting some minutes last two games responding shooting the ball well putting up some numbers and it's just so important you always have to understand when you take a kid that's number one and even though he may not be ready 100 percent ready the only way he gets there is to play yep and, and you have to make some sacrifices you got to take some uh, take some hits as a result but his progress is going to be accelerated if he gets that chance to play and he's responding right now so the Raptors leading by one in the final 10 seconds of the first half. Joe Johnson with 16 for Atlanta. A challenge out high. Now Joe Johnson puts it on the floor. Stoudemire. And at the end of the first half, the Raps take a one-point lead. Now remember earlier we saw Chris Bosh and Joey Graham get confused on screens in the first quarter. No confusion there. Joe Johnson does not get the shot. That's it. Well, Garbo had a terrific first half, 10 points, six rebounds, and the Raps go into the break leading on the road by one. <laughs> Raptors hold Atlanta to 15 second period points, and they lead by one. Jim Todd, of course, joining us right here at halftime at Atlanta. Talk about the, the change of first quarter to second quarter. Uh, we thought we did a pretty good job offensively for both quarters, total anyways, but... Uh, um, you know, we, we, we get out a little bit, we go down nine, we come back, we want a 16 and 0 run. We, what happened was we were coming underneath on the pick and roll. So most of the times we're doing a let through, if they know what a let through is. Then we decided to trap the pick and roll, and when we started trapping, we went on a little run, get us back in the game, get us a lead. We kind of, you know, gave a couple points away coming down the stretch, got to travel. I haven't seen that call in years, but uh, they did a great job on stopping Chris Bosch and controlling him. That seems to be their whole 
game plan and trying to stop Chris and see if we can uh, beat them from the outside, which we don't want to do. We'd like to go into Chris. So we're going to try to continue to attack Chris. Leo, you got something? I'm good. You got it all for all us, right, JT, as all usual. Right. All right, later. Oh, <laughs> uh, we love JT. There you go, Jim. All right, yeah. Leo. Hey, no, no chance for a question after that. Outstanding. Well, Raptors are shooting 54%. Outstanding job there defensively. They're also, remember, this, this uh, Atlanta Hawks team shot just 27% in that second quarter. The only difference for Toronto right now, what they have to do to tighten up this game is cut down on the turnovers. 12 turnovers. They've given up 18 points off of those turnovers. Jorge Garbajosa, boy, he has picked up the slack for Chris Bosch. Bosch over four, but Garbajosa five of seven. He's got 10, six boards as well. Take a look at our IBM winning strategies. We talked about extending the pick and roll as well. They did that in the second quarter. Johnson just four points, battled the glass. Raptors are plus five in that department and win at the line. Well, neither team getting to the line a lot. Raptors making up for it by shooting a high percentage from the field. Good to have you with us on a Friday night on TSN. Chuck Swirsky, Leo Rountons, joined by Rod Black and Brian Heaney. And uh, Tim Donaghy is called a foul against Zaza Pachulia. First time these two teams met in Toronto a couple of weeks ago with Atlanta winning by nine. You know, Josh Smith was um, a big factor in this ball game for Atlanta where he poured in 29. But tonight held to only two. But even that number in that game, Chuck, was a little uncharacteristic because of the long-range bombs you talked about him making in that game. And that's not really his game, even though he's worked on it to try to become better from the perimeter. Third quarter brought to you by Hyundai. As uh, Garbajosa moving without the ball, the recipient of the pass and going strong to the rim and a hold and a foul. And he will shoot two. He's got 10 points, six boards, and his first appearance at the free throw line tonight. But Chuck, Raptor fans should get excited about one aspect of this team's game. And I'll tell you what that is, that you have players like Garbajosa, like Parker, that really know how to move the ball. T.J. Ford, Calderon, that's going to lead to real solid team play once they get used to each other. TSN HD, Sunday 1 o'clock tip time from the Air Canada Center as the Raptors take on Jermaine O'Neal and company and the Indiana Pacers. And the Raptors lead by 249-47. Claxton had a nice start to the ball game. He's got nine. Sheldon Williams, their number one pick out of Duke, giving it up. He's reluctant to shoot that jumper. And so into the arms of Claxton on a spin. Petrulia hoists it up and buries the 16-footer. Now, I've always liked this guy when he was with Orlando and Milwaukee. I just like the way he's cleaned up his body. He's really become much more athletic, even from last year to this year. Hawks looking to take the lead here after trailing by as many as nine in the second quarter. Parker is on Claxton, cross court to Smith. Smith smothered by T.J. Ford. Smith now, one for four. Good defense by T.J. Ford, really crowded Smith. And a block by Smith. Parker felt he got fouled. A lot of contact with the body on that play. And he's got T.J. Ford into the basket underneath. Well, Ford tried to keep Smith from getting in, involved in that break and had to commit a foul to do so. Parker on the other end thought he was fouled, and it really did appear that he was fouled. Chuck, yes. He went up and a lot of body as Josh Smith blocked the shot. And a foul on Fred Jones off the ball. Take a look again at that play by Parker. He goes up right here and see a lot of oh, hit with the body. Goodness. And then but Joe Smith, how about that hang time? He just waits for Parker to finally shoot the ball and still block it. Yeah, but Parker got some contact on that left shoulder. No question. We play 90 seconds here on TSN third quarter in Atlanta. Sheldon Williams, the call of the landlord. We got that nickname at Duke because he spent so much time in the paint. I liked, I loved his game at Duke. He was just one of those blue collar guys. Came in there, threw his body around, did all the dirty work around the glass. Put up some monster numbers there. A great effort inside by Ford. Tremendous effort. He's got to realize that you might want to get it out. He's fortunate to get that rebound. You might want to take it out. It's tough to go back up against the trees. So Claxton down in front. And Bark's out of play. And 
He wants Williams to post up. And Smith delivers way off the mark. Smith is now one for five. Garba hosts it to the cup. He's so aware where the defense is when he catches the ball. We saw that in that replay we showed you in the first half where he had that high bounce. As he caught the ball, he knew who was where, where and who was going to reach for it. It just goes right through the lane for the lane. You know, one of the uh, criteria what Brian Colangelo wants to do is to turn over the back is get basketball players with a high IQ. And Garba Hoots, I think, is, and Bargnani as well. I mean, these two guys understand the game. Well, that's what I touched on at the start of this half. And I think Raptor fans are going to enjoy this team once they really get comfortable with one another because they do have players that will give it up. They do have a high basketball IQ. They just have to understand the system, get comfortable with one another, get comfortable with Sam Mitchell. And the more they do, the better they'll get. Raps start the third quarter, one for six. Smith. Tough baseline pass. Joe Johnson can't finish the first. Pachulia cleaning it up underneath in the Raptors kitchen. And Pachulia now on fire with 14 points, five boards. Yeah, really getting active right now. And that's where that better conditioning, better body has really done well for him. And then Sheldon Williams put his mitt on the ball on Garbajosa's drive, but it went off Jorge out of bounds. Yeah, Jorge saying, hey, that mitt wasn't on the ball. It was on my arm. Give me a call, please. Here's Pachulia. And show you what he's doing right now. Just moving without the basketball. His teammates go up for a shot. He's right there. Nobody blocking out. And that's where, again, you have to have communication. Chris Bosch is around the basket, and Fred Jones has to slide back and get the next available body to block out. But you have to block out. Joe Johnson, mid-range, there's Pachulia going to the floor with Gabarosa, and Jorge delivers the ball to Anthony Parker. Here's T.J. Ford. Good patience by T.J. in the pass, knocked out of bounds by Sheldon Williams. Sheldon Williams, the fifth pick in the draft. But uh, here's Jorge, yeah. along with uh, Pachulia. Going. Never afraid to hit the floor. And knows right where to go with the ball as he's picking it up off the floor. Just a smart two-way player. Jorge yeah, he's Garbajosa. all world. All world. And he's got to prove it with that Spain team. Yeah, a lot of guys think they're all world. But he's, that's he officially, is. he's all world. Garbajosa. Right on cue. If you're all world, you got to be able to make that shot, right? Well, he, he does. He's got 15. 15, seven boards. But a good 15. Got seven of nine. Is all five Raptor points here in the third quarter. Pachulia working against Bosch on the left block. Back it in to send out. Smith to Claxton. Now four on the shot clock. Pachulia on a drive. And that will be a charge on Zaza Pachulia. That will be number three on the big man. Chris Bosch, quiet offensively, but he's been working at defensive end. They're just getting ahead of Pachulia. Ready to absorb the contact, playing with the quick feet. And for Pachulia, that's number three. He's going to take a seat. And this is a very thin Atlanta ball club with Marvin Williams on the bench along with Childress because of injury. There's TJ Ford, that little winner to floater from 10 feet on the pull up. Also, at a time, I looked at one of the fans at courtside and said, Hey, you're not going to make that? He said, Hey, don't bank on that. I will. TJ with 10 assists, 6 points, and 5 rebounds, and that's another charge. And who's on the floor? None other than Jorge Garbajosa. Well, see, you talk about a high basketball IQ. You can try to block shots, or you can play with your feet and take a charge. You see who's got the ball. They put their head down, try to get ahead of them. And Garbajosa does a good job of that. Chris Bosch gets better and better at it. And Bosch is more of a shot blocker, but both of these guys can play with their feet. And, and that's something that, again, Sam Mitchell, Brian Colangelo look at when they talk about IQ. 55 apiece. Also, Chuck, there's a willingness to take the charge. That's a good play right there. You hear the whistle, toss it up. You never know. Nope. But, you know, Chuck, a lot of players aren't willing to take the hit. You have to have a willingness to take the hit to get barreled through. And Garbajosa, Bosch, they're always willing to do that. And putting an excellent free throw shooter in Fred Jones at the foul line. The Raptors are only going to the strike for their seventh and eighth appearances. Fred is two for two.
Don't forget Sunday, the Eagles and the coach, Jeff Garcia. Great quarterback in his days with Calgary. And they'll be taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Ali Ballman. That's a great coach, coach of Calgary. Yeah. Victorious with the BC Lions. I like BC's uniforms. They went all black in the Grey Cup. You know, with the orange helmets uh -huh. against Montreal. You like that, huh? Yeah, I mean, this is different. It's all right. It's just you last night. I saw you dressed in all black. I don't know where you're going. I don't even want to know where you're going, Chuck, but you were looking pretty spiffy. And you want to know where I'm going? <laughs> I, I, this is my U.S. Thanksgiving dinner. She's Pizza and Mr. Pibb. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you who don't know who Mr. Pibb is, it's like a poor but man's are you Dr. Tell me, Pepper. So you, you tell me you didn't get the invite to Sam Mitchell's house? No, I did not. Wow. Wow. So I here I am. I'm sure you'd be there. You know, Leo, you know, you're at the library, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm having an eight-inch cheese pizza that was burned, by the way. I are, just are you can't feeling sorry you, for I, me I now? I just can't believe you weren't at, we're at Sam Mitchell's house. You know? mm. We got a tech foul on the wraps. And the free throw by Lou is good. TJ well, Ford just walked over and gave me a look like, hey, don't know what's going on out here. We got to get it going. Well, it's tied at 56. TJ Ford dribbling in the lane, giving it up. Parker Rainbow. Oh my goodness, that ball hit the back of the backboard, but it was deflected out of bounds. Yeah, it looked like Lorenzen Wright got a piece of that, Chuck. Yes. At least you would hope that would be the case. Well, yeah, well, it was the case. Not, not good to shoot on the backside of the backboard. Gonna, oh, I, I've done that a few times. It looked like me at Tansley Woods in Burlington. <laughs> Here, let me show you how I can shoot a J. Now, Leo, I'll give you aside. I mean, when you when you look at this Raptor Hawks series, we have had some crazy games, oh, have we not, over the last few years? Crazy games. Yeah. Big swings, games coming right down to the wire. Some remember even going back a few years with the, some heroic performances with Vince Carter. These games have always had some kind mm -hmm. of twist to them. Well, there's Bo Peterson, and uh, he was at 371, and then he had to sit out with that left elbow injury against the Cavaliers, and Joe Johnson now is the reigning current Iron Man. And you know who's the all-time Iron Man, of course. I'm not talking about you. Uh, I'm uh, talking about uh, A.C. Green. That's a, right, A.C. Green, but plus. Yeah, his numbers were incredible. But it, it, it's a testament, even to get close to that, you know, as Mo Peterson did. I mean, you're going, you're playing through a lot of injuries. I mean, on a daily basis, you're dealing with all kinds of bumps and bruises and some are more severe than others but you know, some guys sit out and don't play choose not to and other guys step forward every single night no matter what Joe Johnson with the ball is one of those guys and Mo Pete as well until that speed streak is stopped. Stoudemire off the dribble in and out nope and this is TJ Ford line to the lane got stripped turned it over and for the Raptors number 14 and Josh Smith for Stoudemire, and again, he does not look to pass. He has played eight minutes, he's one for five. Well, actually, if you're playing with Stoudemire, if you're Teron Lou, you're the one that controls him. Because you, if you give him the ball, you know he's probably gonna shoot it. He's be selective of where and when he gets the ball on the floor. Chris and Bosch, Bosch. he needs this, Chuck. He's just one of seven in the game. Now his teammates have scored, he's rebounded and blocked shots. But the Raptors would like to see him get going offensively, no doubt. So Bosch will go to the free throw line when we return. Toronto up by two, 58-56. They're grinding this one out, third quarter. Our Hyundai drive to the playoffs in the Eastern Conference. Uh, Leo, <laughs> to be quite candid with you folks, I don't know where we can go with this. Because uh, if you have a good week of basketball in the East, folks, you're in the top you're, you're tier. You're in the hunt. And that's why, you know, it, it, it's amazing how people jump on a bandwagon when a team wins a couple or loses a couple, they're ready to jump off. Because right now in the Eastern Conference, you just got to hang in there. If you, you get your rhythm, you win some games in streaks, you put some nice runs together, you give yourself an opportunity, Chuck, to do some real good things. The Atlanta Hawks, they're heading on a West Coast swing very much like Toronto Raptors just finished. And that could prove to be very costly for them at this stage of the season. And believe me, Mike Woodson's well aware of that. We talked about that uh, today at shoot-around with Woody. 
is very impressed with the Utah Jazz. Teron Lou over DJ Ford. So you and Mike Woodson now it's, it's Woody. I mean, you guys I've are that tight. Mike for a long time. Okay. Yeah, he was a great player at Indiana. I thought you knew Sam for a long time too, but you didn't get invited to his house. <laughs> You are just killing me. You're supposed to have a holiday cheer there. There's a nice, uh, big first step by Chris Bosch to the cup. Well, he, he came to the Raptors bench on that last time out and said, hey, I'm getting pumped. I'm getting pumped. So, you know, he's feeling better right now. And, again, he needs to get involved in this game offensively. Teron Liu again rimmed out. There is Garbajosa. Shovel pass intercepted. It's a three-on-two. And Smith elects to give it up. For Lou from the pocket, bucket, three ball. That's where those turnovers just kill you. The Raptors right now, Chuck, 15 turnovers, 21 points have been scored by Atlanta Hawks thanks to those turnovers. Bosch again getting a touch. He's got five this period. Anthony Parker to TJ. Six on the clock. Bosch wants it. Double T out in front. Parker for three. Hit back iron and elevating is Smith and a foul on TJ Ford. Well, Leo mentioned 15 turnovers for the Raps. Now you can see this one coming right here. Great job by Bosch to change the shot. Garbajosa rails in the rebound and just kind of tossed it away. Josh Smith did a great job of anticipating. Really, really important for the Raptors to take care of the ball. We've seen how turnovers have hurt them, especially go back to that West Coast swing at the end of games and just cannot afford mistakes on the road. Bargnani back on the floor for the Raptors. With Bosch, Jones, Parker, and Ford. Joe Johnson floats a pass. Teron Liu looks at the clock. Nope. Joe Johnson. Sam Mitchell upset right now. Bargnani had that ball in his hands and let it go. He's got to be a force on the glass. At seven feet tall, he's got to make sure that he helps Chris Bosch out as much as possible when he's on the floor. That was a three, 64-61 Atlanta. Nice high-low feed. Andrea turns, shoots, rimmed out. You see, just not as comfortable with his back to the basket as he is when he faces the basket. That's going to come with time. It will? Well, remember Chris Bosch. I mean, mm -hmm. Chris Bosch was not very comfortable at all with his back to the basket in his first two years in the league, whereas now he can mix it up and give you a little bit of both. Bargnani in the international game, up and down, a lot of passing, a lot of movement. Most of his buckets came facing the basket. Also, as a young player, not real big. That was the game best suited to him, and, and that's where the Raptors have to find opportunities for him facing the basket as opposed to posting the post up in the, in the box. Easier for me to say <laughs> than you, right? <laughs> I didn't come out real well. Fred Jones from downtown. Jones is two for seven with eight points, three boards. Here's Joe Johnson left unattended. And that ball hit back around and Bosch with the board. His seventh to go along with seven points, three blocks. TJ to the cup. Boy, he turned on the burners there big time. Exactly. It's like a running back, Chuck. He sees that opening and he just takes it and explodes to the basket. Pretty impressive. Ford with eight points, ten assists, and five rebounds. 64-63 Atlanta. And Ron Liu going inside. And this is a foul on TJ Ford. And for Ford, that is going to be, we've got him with what, Leo, three or four? Let's four. give him four. They have to be careful with that reaching. So we have a break here in Atlanta with 222 to go. Third, 64, 63, Hawks on TSN. And the city of Atlanta. And uh, Chris Bosch uh, played one year at Georgia Tech here in Atlanta, the only season before he entered the NBA draft. And he is just piling up double doubles. I got to get him a deal with Tim Hortons. You think double double work with me, Leo? I'm just waiting for the T-shirt, Chuck. But take a look at Antonio Davis, all-time double double leader with 110. Damon Stoudemire, and then Chris Bosh. And uh, I, I asked Chris. I said, "Why Georgia Tech?" He said, "Chuck, I have a relative here. My uncle lives here, and um, I, I visited Paul Hewitt. He was very impressed. To this day, keeps in contact with his college coach. Loved playing for Paul Hewitt." Uh, in the ACC and and he had that one season in the Atlantic Coast Conference and became a pro one year later look at his frame the difference from 
his oh, freshman yeah, year. Much leaner. Really is uh, filled out nicely as his career blossoms here in Toronto. But you can still see a lot of that same Chris Bosch. Oh. The block shots and the, the quickness off the feet. And you can see in college how comfortable he was with his back to the basket. Changes a little bit in the NBA when you're getting beat up every night. <laughs> that, that will have an effect on your game. Two minutes. <laughs> 65 63 Atlanta. Joe Johnson working on Joey Graham. Back it in, back it in, turns and put it up and in. And that was a tough shot. You got to give Joe Johnson credit for that. Well, that. That's the benefit of a Joe Johnson. He can hit the three, he can get down in the post at 6'6". Six, six. He can jump over. He's got good hops too, Chuck. He can jump over a lot of people down around the basket. Bosch. Oh, blocked from behind. What a performance by Smith. Wow. And then Smith underneath. Don't turn it in a foul. On both ends of the court. Wow. That block shot was unbelievable. Chris Bosch saw the opening, and it looked like he had the opportunity to tear the rim off. And check out this block. Oh. Spectacular. And then right, right after the block, he just runs down the floor. Nobody picks him up. And he takes Joey Graham for a ride as well. Wow. That was impressive. You don't often see a block from behind that clean, that high over the rim, especially against a player like Chris Bosch. 68 seconds remaining. Yeah, Raptors have to be careful right now. That's a big play for Atlanta that can really energize this whole crowd. Important right now, Chuck, even the Raptors at the defensive end, but offensively, they just can't settle for outside shots. They really have to become aggressive now, start getting to the free throw line in this final stands. Ah! And Smith, tenacious, one of the ball. An exasperated Sam Mitchell looking on with 42 seconds to go in the third. Well, rebounds have become a different story as well here in the third quarter. Chuck Raptors with plus five after at the half, and it's all tied up right now. Bosch, double on the ball, has to give it up. Calderon, no. So the Raptors 0 for 5 from three-point range here in the third quarter. Hawks by nine. Matching their biggest lead since the first quarter. Now, Teron Liu off the screen. Nope from 15. And Teron Liu is fouled. Jose Calderon. What happened here in the third quarter, Leo? We have rebounding, a factor. Atlanta getting to the offensive glass. They're getting some good shots right now. Their percentage is climbing. They're up to 46%. Remember, they shot 27% in that second quarter. But they're getting better looks right now. And the Raptors not getting to the free throw line as often as they need to in this game. They've only been there 10 times. And remember, in their win against Cleveland, the Raptors got to the line 34 times. And well, this game's kind of playing out, Chuck, in the loss to Atlanta at home earlier this season. The Raptors only got to the line 16 times, and they're on that pace in this game. Now we're down to three seconds remaining. Joe Johnson puts it on the floor one second, and he tried to toss it in off the window, but Joe Johnson with 21 in the ball game. Johnson and Smith, he got it, the Hawks going with a block and a dunk. We go to the fourth. Raptors down by seven. Our speed six, 24 7 third quarter stats. Well, Raptors percentage dropping. They shot just 30% in that third quarter, whereas the Atlanta Hawks shot close to 50%, and they're at 46 right now. You look at a lot of the numbers, Chuck, but also the turnovers are huge for Toronto. 15 turnovers gave up 21 points, and there's some folks from Toronto cheering on the Raptors. Adam, Josh, Blaine, and Robbie from Thornhill. Now these boys have had a lot of fun. Oh, yes, they're they out are. there cheering on the Raptors and they're calling out everybody's name and even had an opportunity to spend some time with the Swarsk and get some autographs. And that just makes anybody's trip worthwhile. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what's worthwhile. Watching the performance of Jorge Garbajosa. Well, they're going to need him to step up big as well as Chris Bosch in the fourth quarter. Bosch not starting this fourth quarter. It's Bargnani, Garbajosa, Calderon, Ford. 
and Graham. Interesting to have Ford and Calderon on the floor at the same time here to start the fourth. Chris Bosch said his knee's feeling good. He hasn't appeared to be limping or favoring his knee in any way, but he has had a quiet night offensively with just seven points. And they've done a good job. Oh, they have. They've really collapsed on him and tried to force others to make plays. I think the kid Williams has played Chris very well tonight, along with Petrulia, and that's going to be a charge. Boy, how many charges tonight have you know, we've seen Graham on the floor, Barbara on the floor, and now wait a minute. Raps TV bringing you fourth quarter action. Raptors NBA TV HD. This will be interesting what the referees decide here. Tim Donahue was right in front of us. He had the best angle on that play. He called the charge. Sean Wright Joe was Johnson. underneath yeah, the baseline. Sean Wright was under the basket. He's the one that's disputing this call or, or has another call. So they're discussing it right now. Again, the official in front of us, Tim Donahue, I, had, I thought had the best angle right there. Joey Graham, pretty good effort, I thought, to draw a charge as Joe Johnson dipped his shoulder. And it appears that they're just going to call it a jump ball. You're going to have a double yeah, foul. Double foul, they're going to call a jump ball on this play. And Mike Woodson saying, wait a minute. You've got to make a decision on this one. I'd have to agree with Donahue's call, Chuck. Again, he had an angle right in front of us, and he called the charge on Joe Johnson. Is that one of those calls where, okay, how are we going to work ourselves out of this? Exactly. <laughs> We're in a mess here, boys. Come on, get together. <laughs> Let's clean it up. Well, bottom line, it's Raptor ball. And they have some work to do, trailing 72-65 early fourth quarter. Chuck Swirsky, Leo Routens, Rod Black, Brian Heaney, our outstanding staff of Paul Graham, Troy Clare, Matt Bloom, and jumping Johnny Russell. This is Joey Graham. Nope. And it is controlled by Atlanta. And this is Joe Johnson. Johnson going up top to Teron Liu. This is going to be a tough matchup. Yep, called it on on the floor. See if Atlanta tries to take advantage of it. But what you're doing is you're having some mismatches. Whether it's Joe Johnson on guard Bajosa, although he's pretty good at handling quicker players at times. Josh Smith being guarded by Calderon. You get some mismatches that if Atlanta tries to take advantage of, could hurt the Raptors. Right now it's balanced out, and the right people are guarding the correct matchups. Lee Stoudemire cut it and a foul. Well, Stoudemire was really upset at the end of the third quarter when Joe Johnson came down and never looked at anybody else. He was wide open in the corner. So he's he, he's a guy that's a scorer. He looks to score. He really wants to get his hands on the ball right now and do an outstanding job of moving without the basketball. Here playing off his teammates. Called Ron relaxes for a second. Looks to see where the ball is. And that's where a good offensive foot player will hurt you. You stand up. Turn to see where the ball is. If you don't play your man in the ball, you're going to get beat. Salim Stoudemire took advantage of that. Raptors have won three straight at Phillips, and overall they're nine and four in this building. Got an email today from one of our viewers, Nat, who said, Chuck, listen, I've done a lot of homework, and the Raptors own the Hawks here in Atlanta. And thus far, we need some work. Ten-point deficit here. The Raptors need a field goal. They've gone 0 for 3 here in the fourth. TJ shakes, bakes, giving it up. Andrea is going to pop the rock way off the mark. Yeah, see, and, and just not the time to really take the jump shot. When you're struggling, you're missing your shots right now. Percentage for Toronto plummeting. You want to try to get to the basket if you can. Shooting 43%. Stoudemire over four. Barbahosa, perhaps settling for jumper after jumper. And this is Stoudemire challenging Barbahosa. Oh, yeah, that's a time out there. Yeah, Chuck, when you're taking those long, long shots, you get the long rebounds and about the four bounds. You put yourself in positions where you're vulnerable to fast breaks like we saw right there. All right, we're going to take a break. Fourth quarter, 9.23 to go. 77-65 Atlanta. 
And we are back in Hotlanta. And uh, joining us on TSN. Well, and speaking of creating a reaction, Chuck, <laughs> it's time to go to Ford. Yes, it is. Create a reaction. Please. <laughs> Ford Fusion, create a reaction. And it was T.J. Ford that said going in each game, it's hard to predict who's going to win. The league is well balanced and it's equal. No team is as dominant as the next. T.J. Ford with uh, 10 assists, 8 points, 5 rebounds. But uh, the Raptors have kind of gotten away from what was really successful in that second quarter. Right, the second quarter, good ball movement, good shots. The defense was outstanding. Sam Mitchell was really happy with what his group was doing. They were getting out good scoring opportunities because of their defense. Their defense was generating points. But right now, they're more passive. The game has become much more perimeter. Now, Chris Bosh is not in the game. You have to wonder how long. It will be that he stays on the bench, but they have to attack the basket. Well, Bosch has played 33 minutes, only has one foul. Garbajosa, he's going to post up Joe Johnson, and he traveled. That was good defense by Joe Johnson. Pressure on the body, and then he released, causing the walk. Chris Bosch looking on, along with Joe Graham and Derek Martin. Again, you don't want to let this lead expand if you're uh, the Raptors with Bosch on the bench got to make one last run here comes Chris Bosch Chuck as we talked about he's ready to come back in here and oh, Mitchell, you'll walk. Sam Mitchell deciding to go with, back with Chris Bosch yep. looks like Jorge Garbajosa is going to come out of the game Let's see, you've got uh, T.J. Ford, Chris Bosch, Andrea Bargnani, and uh, Anthony Parker and Fred Jones. Now, with everybody on the floor, Chuck, mm -hmm. Bargnani's quick enough to put the ball on the floor against Pachulia. Yes. Bosch can attack Josh Smith. Yep. Not a great one-on-one -on -one defender. So you have some guys that can attack and put the ball on the floor. T.J. Ford talking about a tough shot right there. He's really got that ball up nice and high. I like his shot when he, when he goes up quickly and sets his feet. Has a nice release on it, and I like the arc. It always gives the ball a chance. And Ford now with the double double of 10 points, 10 dimes. Again, the problem with the Hawks, they have not been able to close it up. They've had leads, and they've blown them in the fourth quarter. And that's something the Raptors have to be aware of that if they play their game, they can come back and take this game. Andrea Pagnani, shot block, gets it back, double pump. And he gets two. And that's what you want to do. When you're playing against a shot blocker like Josh Smith, don't challenge him. Don't just go right up on him because that's what he wants you to do. You're giving him an advantage. Right here, just a little hesitation. Smith is going to leave his feet, and that's going to put you on a free throw line. Bargnani does get the rebound. It does it the second time and does get fouled. And his free throw shooting has improved dramatically. He has made his last seven. You almost shook him up. <laughs> I almost put the jury jeeps on him. I came out to the shoot-around today. This guy was on fire, Leo. I mean, he was knocking down jumpers, free throws. I mean, the ball wasn't even hitting the iron. No, he could shoot the ball. A lot of it's just knowing where your shots are coming from, when to shoot it. And again, it's just a level of comfort. There's no question he can shoot the ball. 79-69 Atlanta. Joe Johnson has poured in 21. Double on the ball, giving it up to Lou. As soon as he released that, we had a great angle at that. That ball was going down. But you see the time he had to shoot it, Chuck? Far too much time. Oh! Andrea Bagnani with a facial on Smith. Well, even though you're scored on, which the Raptors were, they got the ball down the floor right away after a made bucket and were able to get a quick one themselves. And what big man was running the court? That's right. The well, seven-footer. You got the seven-footer that can run. You got Bosch that can run. So you have those options. Now the Raptors need to play some defense. Lou, nice pass to Petrulia. And did we have a foul before the expiration of the shot clock? Yes, we did. Andrea Bagnarni with nine points and three rebounds. And this was the play before. T.J. Ford pulling everybody to the basket and just catching the trailer, Bagnarni. So Bagnarni. Taking probably, what, some minutes away from Rosho, you think? Uh, no question. You know, Rosho is the type of player that he will be ready. He's a utility guy. He's a seven-footer. He's been around the league a long, long time. He's going to stay ready, keep his body ready. But he knows the young guy has got to get some time to develop. 
Well, we are seeing the uh, development of Andrea Bargnani right in front of our eyes, folks. 83-71 Atlanta, TJ Ford shot block, and they're going to call goaltending on Smith. And that's why TJ Ford, small, quick guy, when you're going to the bucket, get that ball to the glass as quickly as you can, because once it touches the glass, you're safe. The defender can't get it. Look how quick he gets it. And right away, get that ball to the glass, and Josh Smith, he's blocked a handful, but not that one. Smith holding and looking to lose. Under seven minutes and running. Joe Johnson against Fred Jones running baseline on a reverse. A wild shot. When he put that ball up, I'm not sure he thought it was going down. He's got great body control. Had the right English on the ball as well. He did. That's a pretty good pass right there. Sure Quick was. look from Bargnani. Josh Smith had to hang on to Bosch to prevent a dunk. See, I think on this reverse, I think he was just hoping to now watch. touch you'll, some iron. You'll see it right here. Watch the control he has right there, just waiting, and he put the right English on the ball. When he looked back, he knew that ball was going in. And when I say English, Chuck, I'm not yeah. talking Alex. A former assistant here at Atlanta under Lon Kruger. Right. See, oh. other people go to the library, Leo, just not you. Well, Chuck, you know, maybe you have to. I say it all the time, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. <laughs> now, we did say it was a different kind of English, but this English right here knew how to put the ball in the bucket, too. About 21,000 points worth. Mm -hmm. He was a very good mid-range jumper, a lost art in today's world. He just world. didn't stop running. I mean, I had to cover him one time. You just got to grab on his shirt and hang on. What a runner by Ford. Tip, nope. Good box out by Petrulia. Yeah, you mean you were actually in a game when Alex English <laughs> played? I mean, normally you got it in a garbage time. You were cleaning up the scraps. I think he was just coming out. Oh, okay. Here's Petrulia. We're at 6.06 fourth, 85.73 Hawks. Joe Johnson now covered by Bosch. Joe Johnson rimming out. A good job by Bosch to avoid a foul and still contest the shot. Or Bosch really demanding the ball. Andrea with a deep three. Short. And there's TJ as the clock continues to run. Ford. Bosch. And we've got a foul. Boy, Josh Smith thought he had all ball. I think the ball's got to get to Chris Bosch a little quicker. Yes. He's posting up, he's posting up, and, and, and by the time he gets it, he's there for a long time. Get it to him a little quicker so he can get into a rhythm. Harry the Hawk. That's impressive. That's a Johnny Cash. Are we no far? <laughs> uh, <Chuck>. <laughs> <laughs> Our Sprite Impact player. No, it's not Leo Robinson, 1984. It is Josh Smith. Uh, he, he's one of those guys that just has some spectacular oh. plays like this one. On the block on Bosch and here. Bargnani challenging him. He gets that. Oh. Little hang time. Dominique Wilkins. That's there right. he goes. A Hall of Famer. That's right. You talk about the human highlight film. This was Dominique Wilkins. Oh, Chuck, boy. I've been around some high fires. You know, I had the yes. privilege of being on the floor with guys like Michael Jordan, Dr. J, but Dominique Wilkins was absolutely spectacular. This guy, he, he was one of those guys, when he dunked it, he gave the appearance that he was still going up as the, he was throwing the ball through the bucket. Spe just spectacular dunks over people, around people, you name it. He could play above the rim. Great guy, too. Well, Leo, I'm, I'm going to talk about another ex-Hawk during a dead ball, but right now the Raps have some work to do. They're trailing 85-74 with 5.23 to go. Teron Lou took his eyes off the ball. He was looking at where the pass was going to go before he caught it. So to get back in this ball game, if you're Toronto, got to get to the basket. Good ball movement, good penetration. Don't settle for jump shots. Be a foul on Sheldon Williams trying to get over the back of Chris Bosch. For the most part, I think the kid's done a pretty good job tonight, Williams. Yeah, he, he's one of those guys that's not going to floor you with his game. He's going to do the little things behind the scenes. He's going to be very physical. He's got nine, a quiet nine boards in this game. How about, uh, you know, it, it, that, that's the type of things he does. Actually, my mistake, he's got four boards in this game, six points. 
but the little things. He's always being physical. T.J. Ford now chatting with Sam Mitchell. Figure out what he's got to do. Kept alive by Andrea Bargnani. Raptors get another chance with 18 on the clock near the five of the bar, trailing 85 75. Three ball. We have ourselves a ball game, folks. Fred Jones has just drained a three. So it's 85 78 Hawks. And again, the Hawks, they've been in this position over the last four games, and they can't get it done. And you know that starts wearing on you mentally, Chuck, when you start making mistakes down the stretch because of that. We heard that slap all the way from here about 20 feet away. Hey, Leo, you talked about X Hawks, and uh, I, I wore this tie, uh, a, a bright green tie, in honor of Pete Maravich. Now, Pete Maravich was drafted by the Atlanta Hawks, and during those days, in the late 60s, early 70s, before he went to the Jazz, they wore a lime green uniform, Pistol Pete, number 44. You told me prior to the game that you saw Pistol Pete play in Hamilton. That's right. At Maple Leaf Gardens? Uh, no, at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Pistol in, Pete in Maravich Toronto, came, the Atlanta Hawks played the Buffalo Braves, and that was my first ever live look at the Pistol in Toronto. I do believe he got tossed out of the game, though, so <laughs> I was all excited to see him play, and he got, he got the hook. Oh, oh TJ Ford. That was a gorgeous shot. A tough shot. Hang time, getting up high in the block. 86. Tough now make it 88, 78. Ron Lou really turned the corner, didn't he? Well, he did a great job of looking at the weak side. He saw that nobody was there, nobody was paying attention. And made the quick moves to the basket. Ford to Bosch. Chris. Power move. Got stripped. He's going back to the line. And exactly what the reps want. Yeah, he's got to live at the line right now. There is no way Pachulia can guard him. As a matter of fact, there's none of the bigs for the Atlanta Hawks can guard Bosch when he puts it on the floor. Help has got to come. If help comes, somebody's got to be open. Yeah, we do a uh, pre-production meeting with uh, Paul Graham before every game, and, and today we spoke to Chris. And uh, Paul could attest to this. We put him in the studio to do some sound bites. He was all business. I mean, there, there was no laughing, no joking around. He sat down. He said, okay. And we did about a couple of minutes with him. But this guy, I mean, his approach is magnificent. Uh, he comes to play. I mean, you look past it in past years when other guys are not quite as serious or being a little jovial at yeah. times during the game. Chris Bosch, is, he doesn't want any part of that. He wants to play. Again, this is an eight-pointed line on lead, but plenty of time for the wraps. And Bargnani... With an accidental <laughs> slap, a little push. But Chucky, I was reading his lips there, some uh, interesting Italian. I, I, I can't pass it along, but... Uh, Where's Benicio Garadini when we need him? Or Brian Colangelo? Very colorful. Yes. Uh, let's see. Andrea has picked up, uh, what, his second. And Garbajos is coming in. And Graham will leave. Well, interesting now. Bargnani staying on the floor. Joey Graham coming out. So the Raptors have some size on the floor with Garbajos, Bosch, and Bargnani. I like this. I like the threesome play together. How about this? How about this guard right here? Joe Johnson being guarded by Garbajos. And this is what Jorge does. Even though he's not the small oh. forward like that, he can stay with quicker guys. That time Joe Johnson shooting over him. So it's a 10-point lead for Atlanta. See if the Raptors can attack the hoop. TJ. Oh. So quick. TJ Ford with 12 points and 11 assists. Now the buckets are good, but the Raptors have to get a stop, Chuck. They have to make a defensive stance. Yeah, you're right. They just can't swap buckets. There's Joe Johnson with a runner. Nope. Tap. Nope. Loose on the floor, and it's T.J. Ford accelerating, flying to the lane, to the rack, and a score. Okay, so him Stoudemire turned the wrong way, and as soon as he did, T.J. Ford just blew right by him for a layup. It's a six-point Atlanta lead with under three minutes in running on TSN. Teron Liu, he's working against T.J. Ford. The pitch, Williams walk. And Mike Woodson puts his head down and says deja vu all over again. So T.J. Ford getting it done for the Raps. Will return crunch time here at Atlanta on TSN. Retired jerseys, well, as Leo mentioned, Dominic Wilkins, an outstanding player here for the Atlanta Hawks. 
Went to nearby University of Georgia. Played in Athens. And is a hometown kid. And that's crashing the board. And this is TJ Ford. He's been brilliant. Oh, he's shown some unbelievable quickness. Chuck getting up and down the floor, making quick decisions in transition. Four points, 11 assists for TJ. Our Gatorade Game X Factor tonight. And we selected a couple of players, respectively, Parker and Lou. Yeah, I think Lou may have the advantage tonight, Chuck. 12 points, three assists. Parker started out early, eight points in the game. He's just three of 10 at this point, one rebound. But you know he's always got the task of trying to guard players like Joe Johnson, Josh Smith, always tough guards. But T.J. Ford has brought his quickness to this ball game. Sure has. Been able to beat the guards off the dribble and take it strong to the basket, challenging the Atlanta big men. It's 90 to 84 Hawks, 2.37 to go. Now he's working on Joe Johnson. And it comes out on the left wing. He wants it back. Yep. Let's see where the Raptors run here. He oh splits my. the defense. And a dunk! Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? A 6-0 Raptor run. Joe Johnson thought he had him, and he was just gone. Now this is a huge possession for the Hawks. They are on the ropes. Momentum is slung in favor of Toronto. Smith, Bosch playing the mountain front. Seven on the clock. Smith with a runner. I think you want to get off him a little bit, Chuck. Make him shoot the jump shot. Don't give Smith the opportunity to see the drive. And Teron Lou with a push on Ford, sending TJ to the deck. This will be one of the quicker moves you'll see. Just gets absolutely blows by Joe Johnson and drops it in. Two hands above the rim. TJ Ford at six feet tall. The, the, the way you... <laughs> The way you pronounce that, six feet tall. What are you, what are you trying to say there? So I say that's with uh, maybe a little extra support in your shoes. He's, you know, we know he's quick. Yes. He's just incredibly quick. But his jumping ability, sometimes you don't really see it, and all of a sudden it's there. He's just up over the rim. T.J. Ford back to the free throw line. It is up and good. He has been outstanding tonight. It's a 92-88 ball game. 147 remaining four. Smith again working on Bosch. No continuation. Tim Donaghy has called a foul on Bosch. And so this will send Smith to the free throw line. Chuck, as we said on the last play, you see where Bosch's position is defensively. Josh Smith, you have to make the adjustment and play the percentages of what he's going to do or likely to do in the ball game. He's not a great shooter. He's only shooting 37% from the field, 28% from three. So you want to get off him and dare him to shoot. Once he does decide to shoot, you get up and contest. But if you give him any opportunity to drive whatsoever, you're playing to his strengths. That's what he wants to do. And additionally, oh, he's 67% from the free throw line. It's 93-88 Atlanta with 140 remaining in regulation. Ford again. Got it by Joe Johnson. Puts it in the hands of Bosch to Bargnani. In and out. That ball is halfway down. And look at TJ Ford coming up with a board. TJ, a runner. Baker, good. Did you see the way he tucked that ball on his hip? He saw the opening, again, just like a running back seeing a hole, protected that ball, and that, and that was an unbelievable shot. Wow. TJ Ford putting the wraps on his back at a 10-3 run. Teron Liu in traffic, put it up, rimmed out. Rebound Garbajosa, 93-90 Hawks. We're at the one minute mark remaining in regulation. TJ Ford can feel it. Going to the cup, no, tip, no. The Hawks are going to go deep on the shot clock with this. Let's see if Joe Johnson tries to get to the hole on this one. Lou, three seconds. Lou, the pull up. Big shot.
Raptors have seen this before with Teron Liu. He's been a guy that's come up big in late game situations against the Raptors. So we have a full timeout, 30.9 seconds remaining. We'll return on TSN, Hawks 95-90. And welcome back, Sports Center. Coming up next, Dutchie and Hedger, right here on TSN. They'll have all the highlights of the NBA, what's going on, of course, in the National Hockey League. But wow, Teron Lou with a big time bucket. And Joe Johnson pulls the defender, TJ Ford to him, and then the screen from Pachulia. And Teron Lou, as I said, he's done this against the Raptors. He's been a clutch performer, always willing to take the big shot, never backs away from it. But T.J. Ford, I, I mean, I have just been overwhelmed with the amount of just competitive desire he has shown. Yeah, that's exactly it. He, he's tried to do everything he can to help his team win this ball game. Going to the basket, showing incredible quickness. But his aggressiveness, not only around the hoop, but trying to get in on the glass, trying to finish, trying to take advantage of any opportunity he sees, including dropping this one in with two hands down for it in front of the rim. And he's made some tough shots in traffic. You know, Leo, this is the player that Brian Colangelo acquired from Milwaukee. You know, it, it wasn't a criticism of Charlie Villanueva. You have got to get a point guard in this league to be successful, and Colangelo did his job. I'd hate to think where the Raps would be without T.J. Ford. That's a three. Wow. <laughs> he has just taken over for Toronto. Leo, this is a two-point ball game with 23.6 seconds to go. Now, if you see the way this shot hits the rim, it wasn't pretty. But he willed that ball yes, in. He, I mean, he, he is in the zone right now, and he just wants to make it happen. The ball just sits there. <laughs> it dies on the rim. Normally, that ball is going to bounce off. It just stayed there for TJ, and you can see smiling over that shot. Well, you know, he's told me on more than one occasion that he doesn't like the feel of the ball, but I think he's starting to like it a little bit better over the last week. Yeah. Oh, a this free throw by Joe Johnson. And you can hear the sigh from the fans here in Atlanta. They've seen this before. Yes, they have. This is a big free throw coming up. So, again, it's a one-possession game, but the Hawks lead by three. But, Leo, you don't need to shoot a three, do you? No, you don't. You have a lot of time right now to get a real good shot. You want to get the best shot as quickly as you can. Well, if, 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 obviously, if you do have a good look at a three after you get some movement, you get you kick it out and you get it, you take it. But, uh, again, the Raptors want to get the best shot they can. If they can go to the bucket and get a, a, an old-fashioned three, by a foul and a, and a free throw, that works as well. But you don't milk the clock. You, I no. mean, you want to go straight want to the rack and see you can. Exactly. And lengthen this game and foul on the other end. Exactly. You go for the steal. If you don't get the steal, you foul. Sam Mitchell. Leo, in, in your mind, because you coach, is there a, a mental clock you put in to foul a player so they don't have a chance to shoot a three? Do you do it under six seconds? Do you do it under... I mean, a lot of coaches have different strategies on that, Chuck. I think, obviously, you want as much time to burn off as you can if you're at the defensive end uh, in that situation and foul at the, at the appropriate time. I don't know if you can put an exact time on that. Defense. Well, Garbajosa has played terrifically tonight. So let's see what develops here in Atlanta. Bosch, the handoff, T.J. Ford to the rack, missed! Rebounded by Atlanta, and Smith is fouled. Well, if you're going to put somebody at the line with 17 seconds remaining, it's going to be Josh Smith, but T.J. Ford, it looked like that layup was going in. Well, and, and nobody went to the glass, Chuck. Everybody was spotted up outside the three-point line, but once they see T.J. Ford going to the basket, they have got to get into rebounding position. So he has just fouled out with 27 points, 12 assists, 8 rebounds. And again, more on TSN coming up Sunday with Indiana TSN HD. So TJ Ford will take a seat. He played 38 wonderful minutes. Leo, he scored, what, 19 in the fourth? 19 points in the fourth quarter. Wow. So TJ Ford. Mm. So now this is going to put Smith at the free throw line. He has a double double tonight of 10 points and 11 rebounds. Sam Mitchell telling his guys to get it in, no timeouts. Sending Andrea Bergnani all the way down the floor. 
And this free throw is missed. Again, it's a one possession game. Sam Mitchell saying if he makes this timeout, if he misses, or if he makes it go, if he misses timeout. And it is up and rimming good. Jose Calderon. Motors of the baton line. Bargnani for three. No. Rebound, Lou. And with eight seconds to go, Raps need to either come out and foul. He's just dribbling and passing the ball over the timeline, and I'm shocked they didn't foul. This ball game is over. Oh. And Atlanta wins it 97-93. So we'll return to Atlanta in just a moment right here on TSN.